With the relentless population growth of major urban areas, current models of public transportation are getting overloaded, and that situation's only likely to get more serious. So many new aviation innovators see small electric aircraft as a way to change that equation, and WISC is among this number. The problem we're solving here is congested cities. So take London or Mumbai or Sao Paulo or New York, Los Angeles, where you have a congestion problem, people are stuck in their cars, they're sitting an hour, an hour and a half, perhaps two hours, and also the predictability of not knowing when they're gonna to get to their destination. And so we're trying to solve that problem and allow people to take a quick hop, 10 minute, up to a 25 minute flight, in terms of distance, 20 miles to perhaps 50, um, as the, the, the sweet spot for where we see the biggest problem to solve. We're looking to leverage existing infrastructure, so general aviation airports, um, unused helipads. Uh, so I'll give an example. San Francisco has 32 helipads, all of which are unused. And they're unused because people don't like the annoyance and the noise from a helicopter. So we're gonna leverage existing infrastructure wherever we can. Uh, it'd be nice to build brand new shiny vertiports, but we're, we're looking at you know, trying to leverage existing infrastructure. Boeing is a major financial backer of the San Francisco-based company, and the aerospace giant has provided around 100 of its 500 engineers. It's already been working on the case for Evitol aircraft for more than a decade, and soon expects to unveil the aircraft that it intends to bring to market. This is our Generation 5 aircraft. We've done 1,600 test flights on this generation of aircraft. We're developing right now our Generation 6. It's going to be four seat, four passengers. It will fly further, it will be faster. We're doing a full reveal of this aircraft in the fall of this year. At face value, the technology behind the new type of aircraft might seem simple, but there are several important innovations at work and also changes in how these aircraft will operate. These lift fans, this is what enables vertical takeoff. And so there are 12 three booms on each side, uh, two lift fans on each boom, total of 12 lift fans. Uh, we can have up to two of these fail and we're still flying fine. So there's redundancy that's built in. So these lift fans spin, we take off vertically. There's a pusher prop in the back. It will engage to enable fixed wing flying, flying like a traditional aircraft. That transition time between liftoff and traditional flight is about 25 seconds. So the difference also is we're, we're not going to fly very high. It'll be 1,500 feet to 5,000 feet. Those will be the corridors where we fly. And so there's a lot of time taken to get to higher altitudes and then to come down from that higher altitude. So we're flying at lower altitudes, so it's very quick. It's a quick hop, you know, again, 10 minutes to perhaps 25 minute flight. Flying on a wing like a traditional aircraft is one, it's very efficient, and two, it's very quiet. And so one of the big things from a social acceptance perspective is these all electric machines are incredibly quiet. It would be like background noise on a highway that's a mile away. And so when this is overhead and we're flying at 1500 feet, you're barely gonna notice that the aircraft is even there. Like many dozens of other Evatol aircraft developers, Whisk says its initial commercial model will carry four passengers. So why is four the magic number? It's called a load factor. How many passengers are gonna fly on each flight? And so every model that we have done, it's, it's more than two. It's more than three. And, and so from an economic perspective and what makes most sense, we wanna build an aircraft that's gonna last for a decade. So four seat is an optimal configuration, but it's also because of the battery technology. So today's battery technology, a third of this aircraft is battery weight. And so the technology is evolving, it's getting better and better, but you know, that's a limiting factor in terms of how far we fly, you know, what kind of distance we cover and how big of an aircraft we can build. Our modeling has, after we enter into service, in the first five years, we'll have a little over 2,000 aircraft flying various routes uh, in 20 cities throughout the globe. We are going to operate the aircraft to start. Doesn't mean we'll do that forever, but we're certainly gonna do that for the first few years. And so the reason for that, this is brand new technology, brand new market, zero customers today in the entire market. And so what we wanna do is be sure to curate very good experience for the customers. People feel safe, they feel comfortable. 
before we might look at just selling the aircraft to an airline as an example. One thing Whisk's new Evitol aircraft won't carry is a pilot. The company's insistence on achieving fully autonomous flight operations right from the launch of service is a key differentiator from its rivals. And Whisk says there are several reasons for this insistence. So several factors. The, the first is reducing the workload. And so our pilots will be on the ground, not in the cockpit. Uh, what most people don't know today is over 93% of commercial aviation is already automated. And so a pilot will have the controls for takeoff, but can basically be hands off the rest of the flight and even for landing. And so already there's a high level of automation that is already in the system. So one is from a safety perspective, just reducing the workload. Two is that our costs will be lower. Because our costs are lower, then we can charge a lower price and still you know, be economically viable. And therefore, we can reach a mass market, a larger market. So if you think of a helicopter market being a very premium market, we're going after a university student that can take this as an everyday form of transportation. Now, we may not be the first to fly in this market, which is fine. You know, the piloted folks may go before us. That, that's fine. We're okay with that. We are going to be the first to self-fly. That's what we call it. The pilots can be anywhere, so think of it like a, a drone operator, but without active controls. You don't need a stick. They're watching the telemetry of the aircraft. And it's, it's not one pilot to one aircraft, it's one pilot to many aircraft. And so they're watching screens, they're watching the telemetry on the aircraft, they're watching the flight route. They will only intervene if they need to, if there's an emergency, if there's a route, flight route that we'd like to change, etc. Otherwise, they're hands off and they're just monitoring the flight. With Boeing's backing, Whisk appears to have the funds and the patience to take as long as it takes to make advanced air mobility happen on its terms. There will be some that will fly mid-decade, and, uh, and that's great. Like, we, we celebrate that. Our, our belief is there will be four or five people that probably make the journey and actually launch uh, commercial operations. We'll be part of the self-flying part. From our perspective, we're well underway on, on building the Generation 6 aircraft. We're working on things like airspace integration. We're working on things like the, the concept of operation and educating the regulatory authorities on how is this all going to work? How is this system going to come together? We're working on the sensor suite that we're using. Optical, radar, even audio. It's kind of an interesting new technology to be able to audio detect potential threats that are in the airspace. And so, and then infrastructure, the last piece, building electric charging infrastructure, uh, determining which routes we're gonna fly and where we're gonna fly from. So there's a lot of work to do on things that are actually non-aircraft items that will be crucial to approving that entire system. Well, futureflight.aero is tracking all these new aircraft as they scramble to get to the starting line for the promised air transportation revolution. Stick with us for news from this dynamic sector of aviation and enjoy our exclusive database of programs. You can also sign up for a free weekly newsletter. Thanks for watching.